If you're a fan of this channel, you'll know how much I love Hokkaido. Whether it's visiting one of the big cities or visiting some of the rural areas, uh, the northern tip of Japan, or some of the smaller towns that dot the prefecture. And today, we're on the east side of the island and we're going to check out Shire Toko National Park. This is also a UNESCO uh, World Heritage uh, location and I think it's going to be a great park to check out and there's lots of outdoor uh, things to do. Right now I'm just starting off in Utoro which is the town that's just neighboring the park, that borders the park and it's where all the hotels and all the inns are kind of located. The bus comes at 9.20, it's just about 9 o'clock now so we're going to head over to the bus station, we'll jump on the bus into the park and then after when we come back to the town I'll kind of show you a couple places around the town because they're not open yet because it's nine o'clock in the morning so let's jump to the bus and let's get inside the park and I hope you enjoy it I think it's gonna be a great day Shire Toko National Park is located on the northeast corner of Hokkaido I made my way here the previous day by taking a train from Kitami known for curling to Abashiri before transferring to a bus which took us to Utoro. If traveling in rural Japan, renting a car may be a wise choice. And if traveling by bus or train, like myself, be mindful of the times, they can be far and few between. Today we're headed into the park by bus. I purchased the Shire Toko excursion ticket, which covers transportation to and from the park, along with unlimited travel within the park up to the waterfalls. <laughs> All right, so we just made it to the Shire Toko Goko Lakes, or the Five Lakes. And uh, the quick drive here was uh, very reminiscent of uh, Northern Ontario 1117 or, or any highway in BC. You get the mountains on the one side and then you have the water, the ocean on the other side. So very scenic drive. And here's the path trail for the, the Five Lakes that are here. Um, there's two paths. There's one path that is elevated, like a wooden boardwalk type of deal and the other paths on the ground. Uh, the ground path is closed right now due to bear sightings, but we can do the we can do the boardwalk path, which is great. And uh, yeah, this is a nice uh, little rest stop here. You, there's the, there's lockers, um, there's snacks, anything that you want here. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, continue. So as I enjoy the views here, you know what came to mind? I think it looks pretty close to the Windows XP default wallpaper. Just with the bright blues and the greens. It needs a few more clouds, but I think it's pretty close. <laughs> Let me know what you think. So this is the pavilion for the ground path and this is where if you want to walk on the ground path you just have to pay those uh, vending machines and uh, then you have to sign a form, watch a movie or sorry, uh, attend a presentation on how to protect yourself from bears and uh, and then you can go. But it's closed right now of course because there's bear sightings. So that was the boardwalk wood path and again if the trails were open, if the longer trails were open you would uh, start off in the pavilion behind me, you'd go around and then you'd reach the the wood path at the end and I think we're gonna take a bus we're gonna jump further into the peninsula to a waterfall so let's go ahead let's jump on the bus and let's head there so it's about a 30 minute uh, bus ride to the falls and then we have to walk another it says 500 meters um, Bus ride, yeah, it's good to gravel road and single, so you have to stop to let the other buses go through, but uh, almost at the waterfalls.
So here's the waterfall, and you can see how high we are. The sea's down there. I don't know if you can see where it meets the sky. It's pretty hazy, but... So you might have the idea of, you know, walking up to a waterfall, saying that, oh, you want to cool off in a hot summer day, dip your, dip, dip your feet in, but it's an onsen waterfall. The water is not that ice cold that comes to mind when you think of waterfall. It's kind of right now here, it's about, uh, I see it's about room temperature, not terribly warm, but it's not that ice cold that you, that you think of when you think of a kind of a, a river or a waterfall. And, and uh, you can walk up a little bit as well, or you can just uh, relax in kind of one of the pools here and, and definitely something different, walking in a onsen, hot spring, waterfall, river type of deal. We're all done with the Onsen River or Onsen Waterfall and we're heading back to the bus stop and the good thing is the buses are every 20 minutes so uh, whether you spend a little bit of time or, or longer time you're never too long from a bus. So we're going to take the bus and we're going to head back down to the uh, Five Lake Center I believe. So I'll see you then. So we skipped the Five Lake uh, station and we jumped down to the uh, nature center and this is the first stop if you're coming from the town this is the first stop or in our case going back down this is the last stop so we'll go and check it out and see what it's all about well that was a nice little information center with some displays and there's a restaurant there and and some other stuff in a shop and uh, there's a map there there's a few trails uh, that branch out from that uh, nature center so we're going to check out the Pirupe waterfall it's only about a kilometer it's a two kilometer loop so it's not going to take us terribly long to get there and uh, nice walk through the forest out of the sun nice uh, lots of shade so looks like a nice little little trek in the woods. So here's the waterfall and it looks spectacular. And as you can tell the waterfall there's no river. It's just spring water percolating through the rock that's just falling down. And uh, you have the ocean on the one side and there's a couple boats and I guess a few people in some kayaks down there. You have the lighthouse across. Nice rock face you can see the detail in the rock and especially with the sun behind us the afternoon sun behind us I mean it looks amazing nice blues and greens only 10 minute walk highly recommend just to come down here and just enjoy the the nature the scenery really really nice so uh, the town itself has a couple things to see so we have some time let's go ahead and uh, see and I'll show you kind of uh, what there is around the town So there's a couple of convenience stores in town for any provisions that you might need. My favorite is the uh, Seiko Mart. Uh, it's only found in Hokkaido, a Hokkaido convenience store, and they have uh, this uh, kind of the, the fried food, uh, the warm corner, and uh, I think the fried chicken there rivals the kernels. It's actually pretty good. So there's a good selection there, everything that, everything that you need. And uh, yeah, there's a couple of convenience stores in the town, so it's always a good place to stop to get some stuff. So just off the highway is the Shiretoko Road Heritage Conservation Center and this is a great place uh, if you want to um, get some maps, find the layout of the park, lots of information. It's really well done inside. I really like it. It's really nice uh, just to pop in. And then behind me as well there's also the um, information center with, uh, with the shops and uh, the vending machines and I think there's a restaurant in there too and it looks like they have some ice cream which looks pretty good. So, um, worth a shot if you're going to come into the town, probably the, the evening or night that you come into town, worth a shot to stop off at these two places, and they both close at 5.30. So if you do it, make sure you get here before 5.30. And uh, I think all we're going to do now is I'm going to take you to the big rock over there, and another rock that apparently looks like Godzilla. So we'll check out Godzilla, we'll climb up the big rock, and uh, we'll end the day.
Well, here's the Godzilla rock. What do you think? Kind of looks a little Godzilla-ish, doesn't it? <laughs> Birds don't seem to mind either. So the good thing about this small town is you can walk anywhere within a few minutes uh, to get anywhere you want. And behind me as well, they have the boats. Um, they have the sightseeing for the whales, dolphins. It goes uh, up to the park. I think we saw them earlier. Uh, the boats are just behind me though. So, anyways, over here is the big, the big rock. And we'll just climb up that in a few minutes. All right, so we'll start making our way up Oranko Iwa. I actually did it yesterday. It's actually not too bad. It's only about 15 minutes to the top, and it's just stairs, lots of stairs, but just stairs. So. Get some nice views on top though, so I want to show you that uh, before we end off here for today. Alright, just made it to the top. And if you have something like this, where you live, you don't need like one of those stair master, stair climbing machinery. Each step is like two steps, so unless you're 8 feet tall, and I'm not 8 feet tall, it's a pretty good stair climb, but it's, it's not too long. But the views is amazing. And you can see uh, down there is a lot of the inns, smaller family owned build businesses and accommodations down there. And if I swing over to the left, You'll see up the hill. You can't see this if you're down on the, the main level. You can see the, the bigger hotels are up. I think it's about a kilometer away, but it's, uh, it's higher up on the bluff. You can't see that from down below. So we've got a nice place, a nice little inn. The place to stay right by the, uh, the waterfront. I think, it's, I think it's a good call. If the day is nice, this would be a great place, fantastic place to come up and watch the sunset. So a couple of tips if you find yourself coming here. Uh, number one, make sure you do research on the bus times. Uh, they're infrequent at best and in season, out of season, uh, the times change. So just make sure you do your research before you come. Number two, before going into the park, make sure you bring all of your provisions with you. Stop off at the convenience store, pick up whatever you need. Teas, snacks, water, all that stuff. It's five o'clock, you hear the bells going. And number three is just to enjoy. You know, things are not always going to go right. You might forget something, something might happen. Just enjoy it. The wonderful corner of this country, the wonderful corner of Japan. And this land here was first inhabited by the Ainu people for thousands of years. So a lot of culture here. I think they did a great job incorporating Ainu culture into the park. A lot of the names derived from uh, their traditional names of the area. So if you come here, just enjoy it. It's fabulous, fabulous weather. It's fantastic. And I think on a fabulous, great August day like today, I think there's only one way to end this video.